Uh, thanks everyone for joining us tonight. We've got our authors forum with uh, JP Method, who is the author of Creative Republic, which is free for the month of June for Liberty Me members. Uh, JP Medved uh, writes fun adventure stories and thoughtful thrillers from steampunk works uh, like To Rescue General Gordon, King Victoria's, Victoria's Ball, and In the Shade of, of the Ishtar Trees, to philosophical mysteries like the forthcoming Second Opinion. Uh, he should also probably write tongue twisters because... <laughs> I'm working on them. <laughs> About a minute ago, shooting tons of guns, literally tons, I guess. Uh, and losing metric, yeah. At the most inopportune times. So, uh, without further ado, uh, JP Medved. Um, hi, everybody. JP Medved, um, and uh, uh, author of, of Grant Republic, which I highly recommend you uh, you download and uh, read off of Liberty.me as it's free. Um, but I wanted to talk about, before kind of getting into um, Grant Republic specifically, um, talk a little bit about why I think stories and fiction are really the best way uh, to spread libertarianism. So, um, you know, I, I became a libertarian, I guess over a decade now uh, ago, um, because a girl that I had a crush on gave me a copy of uh, Ayn Rand's novel, The Fountainhead. So I tore through that, you know, of course, uh, had, had a lot of incentive, um, but then picked up Atlas Shrugged, devoured that, and, and you know, by the time that was done, uh, there really was no going back to being a neocon for me. So, um, and I know a lot, of, a lot of other libertarians have had similar experiences with, um, specifically with things like Atlas Shrugged or, or the Fountainhead. Um, and actually, according to a, uh, a survey from Liberty Magazine, now this is maybe 10 years ago, so, um, uh, but uh, according to this survey, a wide plurality of, uh, <laughs> no, Travis, I did not marry this girl, um, a wide plurality of self-professed libertarians um, became libertarians after reading uh, fiction authors Ayn Rand and Robert Heinlein. Um, uh, who, is, as many of you might know, wrote uh, "The Moon is a Harsh Mis The Moon is a Harsh Mistress," which is an excellent libertarian uh, sci-fi novel. Um, so you know, it, stories they're they're easier to remember than dry facts and statistics, um, and and they're a lot more persuasive and a lot more permanently persuasive. Um, in fact, a 2007 media psychology study found that the uh, persuasive effects of fictional narratives are persistent and even increase over time. So that means you know, you're much more likely to remain persuaded, to become persuaded and remain persuaded by, for instance, um, Hank Reardon's heroic courtroom defense of his right to make a profit um, than you will be by a, uh, a graph of corporate income taxes uh, in, in a Cato policy paper, for instance. Not, not to diss Cato, I love Cato. Um, but, you know, when you're presented with a, a sympathetic protagonist, um, you, you easily, you more easily accept their beliefs as plausible and, and understandable because you project yourself into that protagonist's thoughts and feelings as you experience the story along with them. Um, and actually, so Chip and Dan Heath, who are brothers, and if any of you are in business, you'll recognize them for having written a, a very popular business, business book called Made to Stick, um, which is all about the, the stickiness of ideas and how those ideas are transmitted effectively. Um, and they actually devoted an entire sixth of that book to story and the importance and power of, uh, of story and storytelling. Um, and they reference a study in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology, which concludes that attitudes formed by direct experiences are more powerful, and stories give us the feeling of real experience. So, I mean, you know, there's a reason that that um, businessmen, you know, very successful businessmen uh, and, and politicians start their speeches with anecdotes and pepper them kind of all throughout. It's because they're so, so powerful. Um, so my point is... You know, if we really want to accelerate the spread of libertarianism, if we really want this to catch on 
not just with people that are really into economic theory and and um, uh, you know a lot of this other kind of um, uh, statistical libertarianism. Um, you really have to focus on, and we need a lot more people, I think, working on uh, stories and fiction. Um, so I think you know, starting out now, there are, there are two ways uh, that people can help spread liberty through fiction. So the first, obviously, is to write it, to create it. So um, you know, everything from novels to uh, screenplays to comics to short stories, um, anything you can think of. Uh, and there's a lot of good resources out there if you are interested in that, thinking about that, to uh, to help out with that. So um, I think it's on the whiteboard. Uh, Matt can bring it up. But uh, libertarianfictionauthors.com um, is a great uh, uh, kind of resource and group. It's free to join um, and really uh, a great way to network with libertarian authors, to market, to, to kind of help each other, market each other's works. Um, and to work on craft together, um, you know, edit each other's stuff, all that sort of thing. So great group there. Um, and then obviously the, uh, uh, and that's that's headed up by by um, one of the people behind the Prometheus Award, I believe, who is also writing a uh, a guide for uh, Liberty.me on libertarian fiction. Um, <clears throat> uh, and then there's also the the um, fiction and, and writing section of Liberty.me. There's some great discussions going on there. I highly recommend you kind of head over there. Um, now, the second way that you can help spread libertarianism through fiction is by supporting existing libertarian authors. So um, then that doesn't necessarily mean purchasing works. So whether that's uh, uh, you know sharing things with friends, whether that's retweeting things, whether that's um, leaving reviews. Reviews are hugely helpful on things on Amazon, places like that, for uh, uh, especially for indie authors that are kind of starting to get their stuff out there. Um, so, uh, and, and, and if you need a, a list of existing libertarian authors, if you're into and you want to read more libertarian fiction, um, check out, it's again, it's on the whiteboard here, um, artforliberty.com. Uh, backslash book dash list, and that's got a list of I think over a hundred different um, novels and comics and short stories and things like that. Um, so that's kind of my spiel on on the importance of uh, fiction and stories in spreading libertarianism. Um, so I'll just do a couple quick words on on uh, Granite Republic specifically, and then we'll get into Q and A. Um, so Granite Republic is a novella. It's about 12,000 words, and it's written in um, an epistolary style, which means it's a collection of uh, epistles or, or letters from the 19th century. But but this is kind of updated, and it's uh, Reddit posts and uh, video transcripts and you know tweets, um, uh, Reason Magazine articles, things like that, um, and it it details uh, essentially. Um, what happens when the Free State Project actually succeeds in New Hampshire? Um, and, and it's uh, kind of a, a thought experiment and goes beyond the, uh, the, the goal, you know, hitting, hitting 20,000 signers, um, which if, if people don't know, the Free State Project is a, uh, an effort to bring 20,000 libertarians into New Hampshire. Um, and once 20,000 people sign their pledge to move, it, it triggers the move and uh, you have five years essentially to get out there and, and kind of meet your pledge. Um, so this story explores that. Um, obviously, the, uh, the the inherent conflict between uh, a bunch of freewheeling libertarians and uh, uh, you know uh, local and federal government uh, once once they actually start to get some real power um, at the state level. Um, so that's Granite Republic, um, free on Liberty.me. Um, definitely download it, give it a read, it's a quick read, uh, and uh, people seem to like it. So, um, yeah, Matt, I think we're ready for, for Q&A. Hey, uh, thank you, JP. Uh, all right, if you'd like to ask a question, you can either ask your question in the questions tab in X on the right, and just type it in there, and I'll be able to bring it on screen. And uh, if I'm on the screen to ask a question. You can put video chatting in the upper right of, of the screen and then start your webcam and I'll be able to bring you on screen. 
So um, I'll actually get us started. Who are your favorite uh, libertarian fiction authors? Um, yeah, great question. Uh, there's there's a good number of them. So um, obviously Ayn Rand, she kind of brought me into the fold. Um, but uh, uh, a couple of people out there right now that, that I highly uh, recommend everybody here try and, and, uh, and read. Um, Matthew Alexander. Um, looks like we have lost JP. Probably a browser crash. We'll wait just a minute for him to get back. I guess. Uh, here we go. That I don't know what uh, we have a song on that. Um, but uh, yeah. Matthew Alexander, who wrote a great anarcho-capitalist novel called Wither We, it's a science fiction novel. Uh, you can actually read that for free online. A um, uh, couple others. There's there's a great, um, well, Werner Vinge um, is another science fiction uh, novelist who wrote uh, The Ungoverned, a great short story about um, uh, kind of a future North America where, where a catastrophe has happened and now it's kind of this anarchistic, uh, ungoverned lands, and what happens when a state tries to invade it. Um, let's see. Uh, he's not ex well. Uh, in terms of, of um, you know graphic novels, um, there's a good one out by Big Head Press. If you're not familiar with them, um, they're online, uh, free to read. Um, called Escape from Terra, which is kind of explicitly libertarian. A bunch of stories about. Um, the Earth government trying to tax the, uh, you know, the the, the asteroid belt worlds. Um, so a lot of good, and, and obviously Robert Heinlein, The Moon is a Harsh Mistress, is kind of a classic in libertarian fiction. So if, if you have not yet read it, uh, highly recommend that one. Um, uh, Heinlein is is basically the best science fiction author, um, kind of from the last hundred years, uh, and and this. Uh, details a uh, rebellion from from the moon of kind of these penal colonists against the Earth. That's great. Yeah, I think uh, Moon is a Harsh Mistress is definitely one of my favorite books of all time, probably. Uh, yeah, Travis, the name of that book was The Moon is a Harsh Mistress by Robert Heinlein. Um, we have a question from uh, Travis. What is your favorite Pokemon? <laughs> Oh man, it's been a while. Uh, I don't know. Is that uh, it's Charizard? That's that's what I remember from the show. All right, I think that that's a good answer. <laughs> um, Travis approves, so that's good. Uh, John Jones asks uh, to go a bit deeper. How do you envision a small libertarian republic defending itself from major powers? Yeah, so I, I um, it, it, it's kind of I I envision a um, uh, and and David Friedman has started to get into this a little bit if you're familiar with him, um, where it's not necessarily a a kind of centralized military. You know, it's not like if if New Hampshire were to secede tomorrow, the New Hampshire National Guard would be able to defend the entire state from the might of the federal uh, military. Um, but, uh, and what I, what I tried to show a little bit in the, um, in the story is a lot of bottom-up kind of, um, uh, I, I hesitate to say guerrilla, but kind of fourth generation um, warfare. Uh, and, and you'll see this also in, uh, in Werner Vinge's short story, The Ungoverned, where um, uh, the, in, in a free society, you have kind of um, a decentralization of of military power, and you have a lot of individuals that have a lot more um, destructive capability than you would have in in kind of a state of society. I mean, you look at you look at the United States versus some place like Great Britain, and if if uh, you know you had each of those were to be invaded tomorrow, uh, the citizens of the United States have a lot more capability of of putting up more of a fight, defending themselves than people in Great Britain, just because of the Second Amendment. Um, so if you kind of expand on that, you know, you have these, and I call them in, uh, 
in Grand Republic, I call them citizen defense committees, but kind of these these militias essentially of people that that get together and, and with uh, with the internet, with with you know a mesh net and encrypted communications, um, uh, as well as as drones and things like this. You really have the capability to have kind of this distributed defensive network essentially that that can uh, uh, respond to a lot of things, um, uh, hopefully better than than kind of a statist government. Um, and an interesting treatment of this as well is in because um, I feel like I feel like every every libertarian author that, that creates a society has to kind of deal with this problem. Um, a good treatment of this is uh, Robert Murphy actually wrote a novel. Not a lot of people know this, but he wrote a novel called Minerva, um, like the uh, the Roman goddess. Um, and uh, he had uh, private defense corporations. Um, essentially put out bounties on enemy invaders um, that they would pay if you could prove that you had you know handicapped this many soldiers or something like that um, and kind of provided a, a framework for for individuals really to defend themselves um, yeah Mike Matt uh, just posted the the PDF or uh, the first part of Minerva there in PDF it's great um, definitely definitely recommend it yeah I, I was not aware of that I'll have to to read that, and I'm looking forward to to reading your book and see how you handle it. I I like your answer. I think another important thing to point out when we're talking about you know like a small libertarian or whatever republic defending itself from major powers. I mean, take um, take Iceland. If Iceland, it doesn't matter what kind of government Iceland has. If the United States wanted to take it over, it could do it. And so you've got to. Yeah. Kind of hear things. You know, it, it, that's not a problem with libertarianism. It's it's a problem with uh, with reality and the fact that uh, the the biggest stick wins a lot of fights. Um, exactly. Yeah. I mean, so there's just an inherent power uh, imbalance in in size. Yeah. Uh, BK Marcus asks, JP, have you made the Free State Pro Project pledge? I have, as a matter of fact, and it actually, let me see, I think I've got, uh, uh, here we go, I've got, I've got the coin to prove it, uh, got this at the uh, ISFLC a couple years ago from Carla Garrick herself. Cool, and I, I think we're going to have her in here on Liberty Me You for a uh, webinar sometime soon. Um, Very cool. Yeah. I'm excited about it. Uh, definitely, everybody, check out Granite Republic in uh, in the library in Liberty Me, and download it, read it, write a review on. It's on Amazon, right? Um, it is. It's uh, it's everywhere. It's Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Kobo, Google Play, Smashwords, literally everywhere. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. If you really like it, write a, a good review for him on Amazon, and that'll. Get him some more attention. Retweet his. Write an honest review. Doesn't have to be good, but definitely honest reviews are, are hugely appreciated. Honest review. Uh, Bob asks, are there other ways to convey libertarian themes in a compelling way without invoking the fight to power card? The sorry, the fight to power card. The the fight the the power card. Oh, like, yeah, the fight the power card. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of some examples. So, um, hmm. well, and it doesn't. Well, so so here's here's one actually. Um, this is uh, David Barker um, wrote a uh, kind of a short. I wouldn't call it a novel, but it's definitely it's definitely fiction. Um, and he essentially describes a future America and how it came about. Um, uh, that is like a, a anarcho-capitalist um, America, um, and it, it's it's uh, I guess you could say like a, a future history type thing. Um, like uh, uh, there's a famous uh, one called Looking Backwards, I think, um, from the 1800s, where where uh, somebody else kind of did this, and they essentially described the society. Um, so yeah. Yeah, kind of having the state as an afterthought, um, uh, but but describing you know what this would look like and 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 setting stories within these societies. So um, 
Uh, another great one, actually, um, and a member of the, the Libertarian Fiction Authors uh, Association is uh, uh, House of Refuge by uh, Mike DiBaggio, which that's on Amazon also, and that, that won uh, second place in the Students for Liberty uh, short fiction contest, which, which just happened a couple of months ago. Um, and uh, in that one, Mike uh, kind of has created this, this world of seasteads and clades, and there's kind of um, this, this uh, uh, anarcho-capitalist society. Um, uh, and, and he's done an incredible job of world building and setting stories within that world that don't necessarily deal with, um, with the tension between these people and government, but other types of conflicts. Um, that uh, uh, people have. Now, this specific story, I think, deals with the conflict between, between these people and the government, but um, he's got others set within that world uh, that, uh, uh, you know, kind of explore the world and explore other conflicts um, and, and use that as, as almost a backdrop so people uh, essentially um, kind of take that in while they're reading the story, and it's, it's kind of natural. Very great story, by the way. Highly recommend that as well. Yeah, I think uh, w one of the other ways is definitely just showing alternative systems to the things that we're used to and portraying them as working and normal and showing how the logic of them. I think exactly. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, I think one of the one of the powers of fiction is to um, uh, show our ideas in action because. Um, you know, it's 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 uh, and and really, um, it's, I think Scott Scott Beezer maybe um, who, who uh, works at Big Head Press said it best that um, you know we need more uh, libertarian utopias. We need to convey that sense of idealism because that's what's going to get people fired up um, and interested in these things is to is to see them working and working well. Um, so uh, yeah, Scott. Um, Animation and, and video is asking about you know whether whether animation or video would be better maybe than books for a lot of people and, and I think absolutely um, uh, I, I think uh, you know screenplays um, hugely important um, uh, and and video I mean you look at the success of uh, 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 was it libertarianism.org's video series and and uh, uh, a lot of these things that are just getting thousands and thousands of views, um, hugely important. Um, I think you, you need to combine video, I think video is the medium, um, but I think you need to combine that actually with story. So while I think having videos like libertarianism.org stuff um, is good, I, I think it would be more powerful if those were actual stories, like like uh, BK is saying, like Firefly. Firefly is, is great. And I've actually got uh, a list of um, Good libertarian movies and things as well. On if you go to that that Art for Liberty site, you'll find those. But uh, uh, yeah, I mean things like uh, Harry's War is another um, uh, uh, movie about the uh, a guy fighting the IRS. Um, there's one called uh, 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 shoot. There's one about a, a I think it's called like the Castle about an Australian family fighting eminent domain um, to, to defend their property and hugely libertarian, very funny movie. Um, but but yeah, I do think video is, is extremely important and would encourage anybody um, to definitely get into that. And and, uh, and like I said, you know, my, my forte is not in videography, so I'd be getting into screenwriting. Um, and that's a whole kind of different uh, set of skills compared to writing uh, novels or short stories, um, but definitely one worth cultivating. Yeah, on that note, we're probably going to have a multi-part lecture series coming up in, within the next couple of months on how to get uh, how to get good production quality out of a small budget with video. So if you're interested in that, definitely come back because we're going to be offering that. I'm going to pull up the whiteboard real quick so you can see those. Uh, Oh. Yeah, and, and Travis, yeah, Travis, it's just it's artforliberty.com. Um, oh, did it? Did the whiteboard delete it? Apparently. Um, and that's that's got links to um, a bunch of lists on fiction and music and and uh, uh, movies and and TV as well. Um, 
that's the one the one link and then the other is is uh, libertarianfictionauthors.com uh, which if you're interested in in doing any kind of fiction I highly recommend you join and if you're not interested in doing fiction there's a mailing list as well so you can keep up to date on uh, new releases All right, well, thank you so much for coming, JP. Uh, we've had a great time here. Uh, if uh, everyone wants to you know, wait out for just a little while, at, at 10.30 p.m. Eastern, we've got a session with James Cox of Ripple Singapore. He's going to be talking about the Ripple payment system and its possibilities for revolutionizing global commerce. So check that out. And also tomorrow, uh, we have a... Uh, Oh, actually, we don't have one tomorrow. It's Friday. Uh, Jeff Tucker is going to be reprising his uh, do's and don'ts for Talking Liberty. So if you missed it the first time when we did it at the beginning of this month, definitely check it out on Friday. All right, thank you so much. Uh, awesome. Thank you for coming, JP, and thanks, everyone, for showing up, and thanks for your great questions. Take care. Yeah, no, thank you, everybody.